What's up, you guys? So I want to talk to you today about a really awesome program called Image Magic. One of the great things about Image Magic is that it allows you to do some really interesting stuff, like editing images, creating images, and converting images straight from the command line. Now, while Image Magic is actually capable of all of these awesome features, it's actually capable of a lot more than people really realize. You see, Image Magic actually has the capability to take screenshots, it has the capability to set your root window, so setting your background for your computer, it even has the ability to act as a graphical user interface. So say for example you could replace GIMP with it, you could replace Krita if you use that, you could replace a bunch of tools with it. Now that being said, you probably wouldn't want to replace them because while Image Magic is amazing, it still has its limitations and in some cases you're better off using something like GIMP. And today we'll be showing off each of these different things, showing off their limitations as well as their advantages, and hopefully you guys will get interested enough to stick around, try out Image Magic for yourself, and use some of these really great tools. And before we get into today's video, if you guys are interested in this sort of stuff and you want to learn more about other command line tools, you want to learn more about me, you want to learn more about interesting programming stuff, then make sure to subscribe, hit that bell icon so you guys will get notified in my next video, and like this video so that way I know you guys are interested in this sort of stuff and you want to see more of it. Anyways guys, let's go ahead and take a look at how you guys can go ahead and get interested in image magic and use it from day to day. Now just to give you guys a really quick example of a simple usage that you guys could do, let's just say I open an image, so we've got a few right here, let's just go ahead and open this one. Then we'll get to look at the image, now that's my background, and so something that you can do with it is you can actually use one of the many commands that you can use with image magic, one of them is convert. So if I use convert, I give it the input image, so we're just going to give it this one, and then we're going to do chan channel RGB, and then we're going to do negate, and then basically what this actually does is this is just going to invert the image, and then we give it an output image. You see, now I've got the input image, I tell it that it wants to invert the RGB colors, and then I actually am changing it now to a PNG instead of a JPEG. Now when I hit enter, it will take a bit to convert it and do all that work. But once it's done, I can open the output. And there we go, there's our inverted image. Pretty neat, hey? Now on top of being able to do some pretty interesting editing, that was just a little glimpse at some of the really cool things you can do. You can actually do things like take a screenshot. So for example, here I have just my terminal up here. I'm going to take a screenshot of part of my screen. Now this is going to look a bit strange to you guys because the issue with it is that it doesn't really allow you to do screen capture when you're actually taking these images. So you're going to have to just take my word for it and give it a try for yourself when you install Image Magic. But the way that you do it is you're going to do import and then you're going to give it what you want to take. So we're going to do a screen PNG. And so when I hit enter, it's going to kind of lock up and you're going to see that I am frozen but it allows me to select a region. And then once I've selected that region, I can actually open screen.png and you'll see that we now have a little section of the screen. So pretty interesting, pretty easy way to take a quick screenshot. So that's one of the really many useful things. Now on top of that, you can actually do import screen and you can actually give it stuff like what you want to do with it. So channel RGB gate. And so now we've taken a different screenshot. I know I locked up there for a sec, so you probably were a bit confused. But now it's got a inverted section of the screen. So you can do image editing while you're taking a screenshot, which can be super useful. Say, for example, you've got a black background and you wanted it to be in white so it would work in a PDF or something like that. Maybe you wanted to uh, maybe remove the white from the background while you take your screenshot. Anything like that you could do using import. Now one of the really great things about how this works is it actually allows you to basically replace any screenshot utility you currently use. In fact, one of the really common ones, known as Flameshot, is actually pretty easy to replace by just having it do something like this. So say we had import, and then we're just going to do uh, and and, and then we're going to give it something to open. So we're going to tell it to open screen.png, and then screenshot, and then it's going to open it right away. All right. Now this is open in SXIV, and so now I could do stuff that rely on my key bindings in SX, SXIV. And so I could do Control XQ, and then this will give me a QR code to scan this on my phone and get the image, or Control XP, which will open uh, a program that allows me to paint on it. Maybe Control XG to open it in GIMP. And so that basically allows you to do a bunch of different stuff, pretty much anything you can think of. So things that Flameshot probably couldn't even implement purely because of its limitations, can be done just by relying on external programs, which is really awesome. 
So on top of being able to use this from the command line, you can also write some easy scripts. So for example, I have window shot, which will give me some options. So I could do select an area, which is what I was doing a second ago. I can select the current window or I can select full screen. So let's select current window and it will actually grab my current window and take a screenshot of it. Um, it's not very visible because this is on a black on a black background, but I'm sure you guys can see the idea of it. Let's actually go ahead and let's just, just run this in a separate window. And then current window, there we go. And then now it's selecting this whole entire window and taking a screenshot of it. Now just taking a really quick look at window shot. Um, it's actually pretty simple. So when you look at it, it collects the date. It uses some general functions. These are pretty simple. And is just what it does at the end of it all where it gives a little notification saying it took the screenshot. And then it opens it in my image viewer and then it exits. Uh, so it'll kill clutter, which is what uh, makes my cursor go away. So when it kills it, that way I can see my cursor. And then it will basically return clutter or unclutter when uh, when it's done. And it will use import to take the screenshot. Pretty simple. And the name just comes using date. Now on top of that, it can do window shot, which is pretty simple. Import. And then you actually use dash window to select the window. And then here I'm using xprop, which is a, another command. Pretty simple. And it just gets the root window. And then it gets its information, uh, which is basically just a bunch of properties about it. It finds the net active window, prints that out, and then that is what is captured. Then for the root window, it just does the same thing, but instead of having to find it, it will actually just select the root window of your screen. And then this is just the prompt sort of information. Pretty simple, but pretty neat. So you can extend this in quite a few ways. Now, just to make my life a bit easier, I'm just going to show you guys a clip I took yesterday of how I did the actual setting of the main window, because in order to do it, you have to basically restart your X uh, server. So that way you no longer have the background already set. And then you can actually set your background. So you could obviously automate this so that way it runs the actual command at startup. But just because of that, I don't really want to restart my entire X server and close everything down. That's why you guys are going to be seeing a weird change in clothing and setting. All right, so right now I've just restarted my window manager without setting my background. So my background is just the default. So this is actually the command that I'm going to use to set my background right here. So we're going to do display backdrop, and then we're going to give it a background to kind of fill the space with. And then we're saying the window to display this on is the root window. And then this is the image we're setting. And then display is basically the command that we're using, which once again comes with image magic. Once I CD into the director that actually has our image, and when I hit enter, it will set my image for my background. So there we go. So now there's my background. Um, obviously, the background actually doesn't fit the exact shape of my window. But if it did, then it would not actually need to be filled with colors. And that's kind of why I have the actual background for my image set. But anyways, so that's how you would actually do it. Pretty cool. Pretty interesting. You guys can go ahead and give it a try if you want. Um, I don't recommend it if you guys have multiple monitors, but it can be pretty interesting to play around with and set your background with Image Magic. No need for any extra tools. All right, so now that I've got you guys back, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how you can actually do the actual graphical image editing, which is pretty simple. So a really quick example. So we're going to do display, which is what the actual command is, and then we're going to give it an image. So we're going to just select Rocky, and there we go. So we've selected it, and so now we can actually move around. We can select regions to look at. And here we go. So it's the same image as before. It does do a different zooming. I think there's a way to actually zoom in and out. Um, but I usually am just looking at one specific spot. So it's usually not a big deal for me. So now let's actually do some quick image editing. So we've got the image. Let's go right about here. So when I click with my left click, it will actually give me a bunch of options. So I can do stuff like flip and it will flip the image. So now it's, if I look around on it, see that it's upside down. Um, we can go to effects and it's got a bunch of different effects that we could actually use. So like blur, we can give it a value, we can hit blur and it will give it a slight blur. Um, we can choose a bunch of different effects. We can even go image edit, draw. We can even do some drawing on it. Now it does kind of mess with it. I know there is a way to pass through, but off the top of my head, I'm kind of forgetting what it was. You can do a bunch of different image editing and then you can just hit escape to go back to the previous one. Control S will actually save it. Uh, you can do file, save, all that sort of stuff. And so on top of this, you could even do the same sort of thing that we did with import, where we actually uh, made some command line edits and previewed it, which can be pretty useful. So there's a ton of different things that you guys could probably imagine doing with this. And that's kind of why I said that it could be really useful for doing small little edits that you guys might want to do.
Anyways, guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you saw some new interesting ideas, and I hope it inspired you guys to try something new. For example, the way that I have my current setup is it actually takes advantage of something like import, where I can use import to actually take a screenshot and convert it to a postscript file that I can include in Groth. So that's super useful. You can use it in a bunch of different ways, but that's just one of the ones that I came up with. Uh, screenshot utilities are super useful with it, and you can even set your background. So if you guys wanted to go extra minimal, only have Image Magic installed and do that sort of thing, you can. It's not perfect, but I'm sure there's somebody out there that has come up with a much better solution than the way I did it. Now, finally, the image editor may not be perfect, but it can be really useful when you're in a bind, like I mentioned before. And I really hope you guys give it a try. It might just be exactly what you guys need if you've been looking to drop something like GIMP for quick little edits. Anyways, guys, I hope you give this a try, and I hope to see you guys in my next video. Hopefully you guys have subscribed. Hit that bell icon so you guys get notified of my next videos. So that way I can talk to you guys in the future about some other tools and some other useful uses that you guys have. Anyways, guys, see you next time.